Hey everyone. All right, good morning. So it's about 9 a.m. and I'm sitting here, haven't taken any trades yet. I've been kind of sitting tight watching some of the price action on QNRX and NX, uh, sorry, NKTX. Uh, these are our, two of our leading gappers. NKTX is up uh, 95% right now. It's just pulled back a little bit off the top. It feels like due for a pullback, a little bit of a reversal, it has a high there of 1573, uh, which is on a topping tail. So you had two topping tails in a row, kind of extended a little bit higher and is now starting to roll over. Uh, those tuning in on YouTube, if you wanna check out our um, ultimate uh, free beginner's kit, those wanting to learn a little bit more about how to get started trading, check that out. I'll have that pinned um, in the top of the comments right up uh, for those watching on the live feed, or we'll put it down in the description and pinned to the comments down below. Uh, what I'm going to do this morning is walk you through my uh, typical morning, which is trying to find a couple of stocks to trade, the process of stock selection, and then even right down to execution of actually taking some trades. So I'm going to start by looking at the top of the gap scanner. Leading gapper this morning in the entire market of stocks above 50 cents is NKTX. This is a stock that's up 96%. It has a float of 24 million shares. That's the number of shares available to trade. It has 10 million shares available uh, of volume already this morning. So high volume. The price is 15.30. You've uh, see you can see here on this chart how it's gone all all the way from like 12 at the volume weight average price all the way up to a high of 15.73 and is now starting to pull back a little bit. It's been grinding a little bit, kind of dipping down, popping up, dipping down, popping up, some topping tails, a little tricky, not super clean action, although it's continued higher for the way I trade, which is specifically for breakout trading. It's not been super, super clean. So I haven't taken any trades on it. I'm usually not inclined for my first trade to be a dip. Uh, I will sometimes do it, but Usually I'd prefer my first trade to be a breakout trade, and I haven't seen a breakout on this one that I'd really feel comfortable with. So right now it's on the list, but I haven't taken any trades on it yet. So I'm actually gonna move it to this monitor over here and put it on uh, what I would call my side chart. That way I can uh, have it as something I'll watch as we get further uh, closer to the, the opening bell. So I'm gonna leave that over on the side. Okay, so the next leading gap is QNRX. So QNRX, this one initially pops up to 189, drops down to 140, pops back up. This was almost the same price action we saw last week on a one, one of very similar price. Uh, a little choppy. Uh, there is some news on it, uh, FDA, clearance so you know okay sometimes that can be a big deal but the price action right now being below the high from back here it just doesn't look quite right for me for right now so i think my opinion on it for the time being is it needs to prove itself so it needs to get up a little bit higher and maybe we'll get there but uh, as it sits right now i don't think i'm in love with it so next one is ERYP. ERYP is a 31 million share float. This one, uh, it, the chart's not really that interesting. It's pulled back. SBFM just hit my high day MoMA scanner. The problem with this one is that it's below its 200 moving average, that purple line. That's almost always resistance on the daily chart. So I think that's going to be a problem. Now, you know, it's still got 60 cents to go, but as it approaches that level, I think it's gonna uh, really run into some resistance. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. And hey, reminder for those getting tuned in, in case you didn't already know, trading is risky. I'll put up my disclaimer here. My results are not typical. We don't track the typical results of traders who are using our software. So we're not gonna make any guarantee that you have any higher likelihood of success than the average trader out there. So take it very slow and practice this simulator before you put real money on the line. So SBFM moving a little higher, but that daily chart I'm not in love with. The headline here is uh, files patent application, announced uh, mRNA molecules found to be effective at destroying multi-drug resistant cancer cells. I mean, it sounds interesting, but 
Uh, let's just see if it can get through that 200 moving average because I think that's going to be a problem. So again, I, I could put that one on a side chart, SBFM, and if it has the strength to get through the 200, fair enough. Okay, we can look at it, but it's going to need to get through that level. All right, and then let's see. SBFM, yep, so that's that. REVB. Nice, nice, Danny. Very good. Um, NKTX, yeah, there's no, it is uh, easy to borrow, which means it's free to borrow. You don't have to pay to reserve your shares. I think that that is something to be aware of for sure. It's a, it's a factor. SBFM. Well, I don't think 1153 is quite right. It hasn't even hasn't even been to 11 in the last 200 candles. I mean, you had I guess way back here that was a long time ago. I say I don't think that's right. It doesn't that doesn't average correctly. That doesn't make sense. All right, let's see. So, it's about 9:08. We've got 22 minutes to the opening bell. And at the moment, I'm just sitting tight. No trades yet. Market sentiment this morning. Well, we do have a gap. We're up 90%. That's pretty strong. The overall market, the S&P 500, we know that we had a pullback on Friday, uh, a pretty sharp pullback. We broke back below the 200 moving average, right? So that was two pretty nasty days in a row. Strong sell-off. Uh, and and we've, we're gapping a little bit further down, so this might just be a little bit of hesitation before we roll further. So not a picture perfect chart there to be bullish on, but you know we'll see. We'll see what we end up getting. LGBN, I'll take a look. So LGVN, the high back here was 16.77. So as far as ideas go, it's not a bad idea. The chart, it's not a bad chart. It is curling back up. We need to break through 13, 13.50. The problem is it's not gapping up. It's only up 1%. So traders aren't gonna see it. There's no news, All right? Nothing's, nothing's really happening with it. So, you know, sometimes these ones can just be a nice idea. Uh, 
Vero. Let's see. Yeah, there is some news. Um, charts coming up a little bit. Let's see. It's only up, it's not even up 1% though, you know, so it's just not up enough. Yeah, I was just checking the 200 moving average here in, uh, on SBFM in TD Ameritrade. It's at, um, it's right around four something, So let's see. Um, well, it's about 9.13 right now. So as I sit here this morning, back to NKTX, let's see where that chart's setting up. So we are below the 20 moving average right now on the one minute chart. And the high back there was uh, 15.28. This candle currently has a low of 14.55. So, you know, this is a bull flag. Uh, you're tapping the nine moving average, you're pulling back, but I don't know if it's going to do an ABCD pattern or actually uh, make a cleaner move. TBLT on the scans. So TBLT, this one appears to be a reverse split. You can see that's why it's kind of coming up like this. So this is sort of like um, a DFFN type of stock. These ones sometimes can move quickly. Your high back up there was 41.67. So hitting the scanner there as it pops up on that candle. High was uh, 22.95, but the spreads are pretty big. So the high back there was 15.05 on NKTX. It's back below the 200 moving average. 
So the way it's kind of set up here, even though you have a five minute candle with a high of 1505, your low down here is 1455 and it feels like it's kind of coming back down towards that level. Thank you folks who are uh, tuned in for the morning show. Always appreciate it and hope you hit the thumbs up and reminder as always, in case you didn't already know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money and my results are not typical. So I encourage you to take it slow and make sure you're not trading with money you can't afford to lose. It's always good to practice this simulator before you put real money on the line. So I'm gonna do a quick dip trade there at 63 and 70. That's a double bottom off of 55. And then let's see if we can get a break through 85 for a move back up to 15. Add it at 85. So we're starting to bottom out here and we're gonna look for the first five minute candle to make a new high. The high of this candle is 1505. So let's watch for the break over uh, 1490, 1495, and see if we curl into our first five minute candle making new high. So I'm gonna put orders at uh, 90 to add. Watching 1490, and then 95 for the breakthrough 15. So we've got 84 on the ask, there's 86, adding 87 for the breakthrough 90. There's 90. Now I want us to see the pop over 15, adding at 94. So what we're going for here is the breakthrough 15. Holding just small size, taking 1200 off the table. We'll let it pull back. Dip trade at 62. Bought the dip. Pops back up to 75. Average is 65, reducing size. Watching again for another dip. So we double topped there, we hit 1505, but we didn't rip. Added back at 67 to buy the dip. So once I start to get a little bit of a cushion, add it again there at 70, then I'll start to look for the pop back up to 75. What I'm thinking about on this is a trade over 15 at the open, back to flat at 59. So the problem here is that if it doesn't hold 55, that red candle's a problem. So $1,100, small gains. You can just tell it's kind of choppy. I don't usually like to buy the dip. I don't usually. Typically I won't because it's a riskier trade. It doesn't mean never, but it means usually I won't. Added back at 48. Made back um, 160 bucks on that trade, 48 to 58. But we're pulling back. I would always prefer to have a breakout trade for my first trade. I'm going to be more confident on it. So I'm only up 1,200 bucks. It's just not a very uh, substantial gain at this point for me. And that's because on a dip trade, if it's my first trade, I can't take a lot of risk. It's just, it's just not my favorite setup. Seller there at 68. Leave an order at 15, 15. But unfortunately, I think this might be one of those patterns where we got this squeeze up and then pull back. So the thing, I sort of disagree. So buying a breakout is actually a lot riskier. I think that when you get a breakout, you have confirmation. And that's what I look for in my first trade, confirmation. So you're paying a, you're paying a higher price for that. But my accuracy is higher on breakout trades because when they break out, you know right away if they're going to work. 
And on a dip trade, when you're buying something that's selling off, I mean, it could just as easily keep going. So that's just my opinion, but I find yes, dip trades are an important component to my strategy, but it can also turn into catching a falling knife. And it's harder for a lot of beginner traders to really see the difference between a pullback, a dip and a flush and when's the time to buy and when's the time to just sit and let it keep selling. So from a risk reward standpoint, you're gonna have a bigger reward potential on a dip trade, but your accuracy is almost always gonna be lower. And I think for a trader who's focusing on one or two trades a day, quick breakouts in and out is gonna be actually safer. That's how I do it when I'm doing uh, small account challenges. So my, um, my TED talk, my, my talk with Ted, my unofficial TED talk, uh, I can give you a link to that uh, for those that missed it from last week. Let's see. We've got about nine minutes to the opening bell, eight and a half minutes. All right, so here's the link. There you go. So check out, uh, you can stream that if you haven't already uh, watched it. Uh, Warrior students, uh, Steph can post a link for you guys. Uh, oh, actually, we're going to email you guys uh, the link later today. Oh, well, there you go. You can see it there. Uh, I was just checking Thinkorswim for, uh, to check moving averages compared to what I was seeing. And a link uh, where uh, you guys can press the pause button will also be sent out um, later today. Okay, six minutes to the opening bell. So Warrior um, students, when we finish trading, I'm gonna have a um, special class that I'll be teaching in the live classes room. And so we'll see how long I trade today. If it's a shorter day, then I'll go over there earlier. If it's a longer morning, we've got a lot of opportunities, then we'll, I'll, you know, I'll go over there later. So we'll see how, um, we'll see how things go. And you can check the, um, the calendar we've got um, coming up at 12 p.m. Eastern, Mindful Monday with Ted. And remember, uh, every morning, 8.30 to 8 a.m., morning meditation, guided by Ted and Diane. This week, Jess is out, so we won't have the 11 a.m. Q&A sessions, but those will be back next week. We do have uh, Danny, 3 p.m. on Wednesday. We've got Mike, 4 p.m. on Thursday. And then we've got FOMO Friday at 1 p.m.
Okay, so four minutes to the opening bell. This is continuing to pull back a bit. So I don't think that, um, I, I don't know, this might just be one that kind of kind of went straight up and then coming right back down and doesn't give us a lot of first pullback on the, on the five minute chart opportunities. And if that's the case, there's nothing we can do about it. So we'll look for the next opportunity. Maybe something else will start to pop up. And if we see something, I'll be jumping on it quickly. All right, so that's the game plan this morning. I got a small cushion on NKTX, but only about 1200 bucks. So nothing really exciting on it. We'll keep it on watch in case it starts to curl and shows that it can break through 15. I would say not just breaking through 15 is critical, but breaking through probably this level of 1528. So we've got a couple levels it needs to break through. Might draw a little descending resistance line, kind of like this. And with three minutes to the bell, I'm gonna end the broadcast for the morning show. But we'll be back first thing tomorrow as always. I'll give you my watch list, same as every morning, and uh, may take some live trades depending on what the market conditions are. Today, a little bit slower. Pro students will keep uh, trading here. And we'll see if we find a little surprise momentum going into uh, 9.30 to 10 a.m. All right, reminder as always, trading is risky. Take it slow. My results are not typical. You should practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line.